Bear with me this morning. I'm getting hoarse. Uh, that funny noise you heard in the choir was me. It wasn't Marvin. It wasn't Cecilia. So, You know, I think about Memorial Day and our remembering uh, soldiers and others who have given their lives for this country. And how in the midst of battle, They marched on when they were told to. Of course, there were some who didn't, some who ran. Uh, Memorial Day started uh, back after the Civil War. And, uh, but we have others even before that who sacrificed their lives to be- get this nation started. <clears throat> and I, I think of all of them as marching forward marching on, no matter the obstacles before them or the enemy before them. And if you look in the hymnal at this uh, hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, we have the words, His truth is marching on, His day is marching on, our God is marching on, while God is marching on, and once again, our God is marching on. And folks, all of that is true. Our God has never stopped. He is always moving forward. He's always marching on. And His truth is to march on. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they are truth. And their truth has always been marching on and never retreating. And God has called His people from day one to march on and to never retreat. In the scripture today, the Lord calls Joshua to take up leadership of the Israelites and to lead them to march on into the promised land. Let's look at the first five verses again. <clears throat> the Lord is calling Joshua to lead his people to the land that he had promised them many years earlier. <clears throat> After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, who had served Moses. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you and all the people prepare to cross over the Jordan to the land I am giving the Israelites. I have given you every place where the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised Moses. Your territory will be from the wilderness and Lebanon to the great Euphrates River and the land of the Hittites and west to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or forsake you. Moses, of course, had died. And the Lord chose Joshua, Moses' assistant, to lead the Israelite people. And the Lord also told Joshua that he wanted him to lead his people into this new land that he was giving them. And that every place they set their foot uh, within the boundaries that the Lord had set would be theirs. That was a promise. And the Lord said that as long as Joshua lives, there would be no one who would be able to stand against him. That he would be able to march on. In my briefcase are cough drops. Uh, They're they're in a bag. I tried one, but it, it didn't do its job, so bring another one.
<clears throat> Joshua would be able to keep marching on because God was with him. He said he would not leave him, he would not forsake him. And Joshua's success in marching on did not come from him just being a natural born leader or an experienced military commander. His success would come because he would have the presence of God with him as he went into battle and as he went to, to conquer this land. His, we, have, <clears throat> we have been commanded to move on with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many, and many of us, and I've spoken about this a lot in, in this year, <clears throat> but many of us may be questioning, well, oh, I, I'm not sure I can do that. But folks, we can. If you will read through the Bible, you will see many examples of people that God called to do something. And he gave them the resources to do it. And... He gave, he made the way for them to do it. And Jesus has commanded us to go and make disciples, to baptize them and to teach them. <clears throat> and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Folks, he will help us through. The greatest resource that we have is our Lord. And through His Holy Spirit, He will empower us to move on and share the truth of the gospel. Remember the Apostle Paul, missionary. Many, had many, many uh, things happen to him throughout his life as a missionary for Jesus Christ. I suppose he walked everywhere he went. So he put a lot of miles on those feet. And I'm sure he encountered things along the way, especially, I know he encountered people along the way that just opposed him. They didn't want to hear about this God. Even some of his brother and sister Jews did not want to hear about this Jesus. But he went on. He marched on. He was threatened. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a snake. I mean, and we don't know all the other things that happened to him. But in Philippians 4.13, he tells us how he made it through. He said, I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me, and that him is Jesus Christ. And we have Jesus' Spirit within us. If we know Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord, then His Spirit is within us. And His Spirit wants to empower us to do what God has told us to do. Let's look at verses 6 through 9. <clears throat> Be strong and courageous, for you will distribute the land I swore to their fathers to give them as an inheritance. Above all, be strong and very courageous to carefully observe the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you will have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to recite it day and night so you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Haven't I commanded you? Up, oh, got to stop there. I'm sorry. Even though, uh, no, it goes through verse 9, doesn't it? Yes. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Even though the Lord was with Joshua, he still needed to be strong and brave. Because he would face opposition and difficulty. 
But Joshua had the confidence to move on for the Lord because he knew that the Lord is competent. The Lord, for the Lord, there is nothing impossible. You remember Jesus' mother, Mary, when she found out she was pregnant? This is a nuisance, but bear with me. She said, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Joshua also knew that the Lord was trustworthy. He always fulfills his promises. And he knew that the Lord is dependable. When he says he will be with us, he will be with us. Joshua had confidence in the instructions given to Moses. First five books of the Bible, or the law, rather, that's in the first five books of the Bible. And Joshua obeyed them. As long as Joshua did not turn from the Lord's instructions, he would be successful. He was to meditate on those instructions, study them, and think about them. We read and we study and we think about what we've read and what we've studied in the Lord's Word, we learn just how competent and how dependable and how trustworthy our God is. His Word will come alive in our lives and help us to be strong and courageous and obedient. Verses 10 through 15. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people <clears throat> go through the camp and tell the people, get provisions ready for yourselves, for within three days you will be crossing the Jordan to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you to inherit. Joshua said to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh, Remember what Moses, the Lord's servant, commanded you when he said, The Lord your God will give you rest and he will give you this land. Your wives, young children, and livestock may remain in the land Moses gave you on the side of the Jordan. But your fighting men must cross over in battle formation ahead of your brothers and help them until the Lord gives your brothers rest as he has given you, and they too possess the land the Lord your God is giving them. <clears throat> you may then turn to the land of your inheritance and take possession of what Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on the east side of the Jordan. Joshua gives orders for his officers to prepare the people to march on into the land of promise. The officers were to help the people, to make sure the people were well equipped to move on and that all understood the plan and the responsibilities that they each would have. And these plans were about expectations and unity. Now everyone has uh, different expectations of what's important or what needs to be done. And some get their plans taken, up, taken care of quickly before others do. But that does not excuse them from continuing to work with their other brothers and sisters in Christ to help them march on. Verses 16 and 17. <clears throat> They answered, Joshua, everything you have commanded us we will do, and everywhere you send us we will go. We will obey you just as we obeyed Moses in everything, and may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. <laughs> the people pledged to follow Joshua 
just as they had followed Moses. And they said, may the Lord be with you. They were praying for Joshua as he led them. And these people were united. And we see here just how serious they were about this unity in verse 18. It says, anyone who rebels against your order and does not obey your words and all that you command him will be put to death. Above all, be strong and courageous. The Lord's people were ready to march on into that promised, promised land with their God. Folks, our God is always marching on. But are we? Are we as his people always marching on? We're not to retreat. Matter of fact, we shouldn't even stop except to rest because stopping, quitting means we have retreated. We are, as a church, we are marching on in some areas. We've made some improvements to the building and to the grounds. Work continues. But when it comes to our purpose and our mission as a church, folks, we are falling way behind. We need help. We need new life. We need new energy. We need to get pumped up about our mission and our purpose for this church being here. 1825. Can you imagine how excited those people were in, in this area when they formed this church? We need some excitement. I need some excitement. I need the Lord to give me new energy so that we can fulfill our purpose and mission. We need a God-inspired spiritual awakening to the obedience of God's will. <clears throat> and in the next, well, weeks and months, my sermons will be geared toward our being energized, giving, gaining new energy, and moving forward and letting people know that we still exist in this community and that God is marching on. Let's pray. <clears throat>